There are certain core concepts that everyone needs to know. Colors, values, and compositing. I have a ton of super easy tricks that I use in almost every image that I make. And I will be covering a lot of tricks today. So without any further ado, let's start with the video. To cut out the stock images, I used the Blend EF technique to cut the trees. Some of them gave me a hard time because I had to do a manual fixing. And of course, if you want to know more about this Blend EF technique, you can watch the latest video that I did on this channel. And to cut out the trees, I used the lasso tool. And simply, I start to follow the edges of the trees till I made the selection. After I finished, I used the select and mask from the select menu to get some of the details back on the edges. And that's by adding radius, contrast, smoothness, and featherness. Then I click OK. And just by doing that, the tree is ready to use. Also, to cut out the plants, I used the blend if technique again. I get rid of the blues. And I slide the darkness on the green channel to the right side. After you get a good selection, click on OK and convert the layer to smart object. Then rasterize it. Now use the lasso tool and select the area that you want. Then use the select and mask from the select menu to get some of the details on the edges. And to cut out this animal, I don't know what's the name of this thing, but I used the mask and the brush tool and simply start to paint with the black on the edges of that animal. And while doing that, I also used the lasso tool to get uh, on the areas that's sharp like uh, this area on his wings because the brush usually is a rounded uh, shape, so it doesn't always work. And of course, you will have to use the keyboard shortcuts to make it faster, quicker, and easier. When you finish the paint, enter the mask by clicking and holding alt then the mask and then with the magic wand tool select the white areas outside the selection expand this by a few pixels and then turn it to black by painting black above it or clicking f5 and fill it with black let's not forget about the color channels technique that i used to cut out this log from this uh, pond or this lake it was not an easy process because as you can see this log is not in front of a clear sky or one color a background there was a lot of areas that needed to be fixed or deleted from that selection and to fix that i used the black brush and i took my time painting out these areas from the selection and like always i used the select and mask to get some of the details back on the edges Now it's time to build the scene and that's by taking those stock images that we cut and start placing them on the artwork. When I work on an image, the first thing I start with is setting up the background so it doesn't feel like it's empty. I started with converting that stock image to a completely black layer. Then I made a mask attached to it and I added clouds effects or the clouds filter on the mask. And then I increased the size of the clouds. Basically what I'm trying to achieve here is to add the atmosphere. And then with the hue and saturation adjustment, I start to increase and decrease the lightness depends on the value that I want. And with a color balance adjustment, I give it a color that match with the background. And then by using hue and saturation, exposure, levels, or curves, I start to fix the values. And the rule that I follow here is that the objects that are close to the foreground, the more details that they will show and the more contrast that they will have. And the objects that are far from the foreground, they will show less details and they will have less contrast. And then I start with the coloring process to match the colors of the objects together. The main thing that I do is first, I sample a color from the background and I add it as a solid color to the object. I turn the blending mode to color and I decrease the opacity to 20% and under that. And then I use, of course, the color balance and the curves and the levels. Basically, any adjustment layer that gets me the results that I want. 
To add lighting, I duplicate the layers and I attach it to the original layer. I change the blending mode to screen and I add the contrast with the curves or levels adjustments. Then I add the warm color to it using the hue and saturation by changing the hue. And then I use the color balance to add the warmness. Then I add mask to them and I invert it to black and start to paint on the areas that should reflect the sunlight or the light source. To add the sun reflection on the lake, what I did is I added two layers, one was filled with black and the other has the clouds filter. And then I changed the blending mode of the clouds to vivid light and then control L to use the levels. I slide the bright spot to the left side till I can see these spots. I start to transform the layer and scale in it till it looks like it's a sun reflection on the lake till I get the shapes that I want. And while I'm doing that, I'm trying to pay attention to the shadows of the trees. After I finish, I make sure it's black and white, and that's by clicking on Shift, Control, Alt, U to turn it to black and white. And then I duplicate the layer of the lake and turn the blending mode to screen and use that spots layer as a mask. Then I duplicate the layer and I add featherness to the second one. And that's to add the bloom effect. I believe that's how the water reflects the sunlight. And then I go to get more plant stock images. I used the blend if to cut them and I start sticking them to the trees to make the trees look like they are covered with the plants. After that, I repeat the whole process of fixing the values, the colors of those plants and adding lighting to them. I even use them as the tree's leaves. And that's simply by placing them above the trees and start to duplicate them. And that's how they look after fixing the values, the colors and the lighting. To add the fog, I added a new empty layer and I went to filter, renders and fibers. And then I start randomly changing the shape till I get a result that looks like a fog. This one was the best, so what I did is I rotate it, start to increase the scale of it. And then I used levels to add contrast. Again, make sure it's black and white. Next step is I added gaussian blur to it. Make sure not to add too much blur so you don't lose the shape. Then I added a clouds layer above it. Turn it to black and white and changed the blending mode to soft light and I decreased the fillness and I start to do some tweaks on the scale of that clouds layer. Now the goal here is to add that smoke shape on the edges of that fog that we made. Now again with a levels adjustment layer I added more contrast and start to change the place and the rotation of that layer till I get a nice fog shape, which I ended up liking this one. I used the transparent gradient to cover up the upper areas and the goal here is to make all of the background black, but the shape of the fog that I wanted to remain bright or white. And as you guessed, I used the blend if to get rid of the dark areas from that layer. I convert it to smart object and then I rasterize it. And now that we have it as an object, we can start to change the value and the color of it. I added just a bit of lightness by using the hue and saturation, but not too much. And using the color balance, I added just a bit of the uh, cyanish color that matches with the background. I made it dark just a bit by hue and saturation. For extra realism, I added the noise texture. I added blur to it and then changed the blending mode to screen, decreased the opacity to 7% or 5%. And for more realism, I added a mask to the fog layer, filled it with black and I added the clouds to it. And then I decreased the destiny from the mask menu. To match the color of the fog with the background more, 
I assembled a color from the background and I used it as a solid color on a layer that's attached to that fog layer. And then I changed the blending mode to darken and I decreased the opacity. After that, I duplicated the fog layer uh, multiple times and I start to change the position and the scale of it. And that's just to separate the objects from each other. And I gave it the blue color so I don't get lost in case I wanted to go back and edit the fog layers. I added my subjects into the scene and I went through the process of fixing the values, the colors and adding the light. Now with this one, there was more to it. Instead of adding one layer of lighting, I did two layers. One is for the light source, which is the sun, and the other is the bouncing light from the lake. It's going to be painted from the uh, lake direction, and it's going to have the lake color, which is the cyanish green. To add the object's reflection on the lake, I duplicate the object with all the adjustment layer attached to it. I flip it on the vertical line. I click on the mask icon and I use the gradient transparent tool to add a selection, a selection with a gradient. And then I add motion blur to the bottom side or the bottom areas of that object. I want the closer areas to the object to remain clean, but the further it gets, it will have motion blur. And then using levels adjustment, I add more contrast to it. Then I add some fade. And with a color balance adjustment layer set to color blending mode, I try to give it the uh, color of the lake. After that, I recommend adding a mask to the reflection and add the filter of the fibers so it looks like the water is covering it. And now to the most exciting part about this artwork. It is making the main character. I made the main character out of three stock images. I used different parts out of every image. One I used as the hat, the other one is the body poster, and the last one is the clothes. I used the puppet warp tool to make both the hat and the clothes fit in with the body. Basically you add points and you can move them or rotate them by clicking and holding ALT. And believe it or not, the blend if worked perfectly to cut the clothes from the third image. After I used the puppet warp tool to match the clothes with the body, I selected some areas with the lasso tool and started to paint the shadows. Then I used the blend if again to cut out the belt. I won't say it's the best way to cut it, but it's definitely the quickest and the fastest. Then using the hue and saturation and the color balance, I started to change the color of the clothes. Then I used the blend if to make the bright areas on the hat less bright. That's by duplicating the hat and remove the dark areas, leave the bright areas and convert it to smart objects and rasterize it and then use the hue and saturation to make it dark. I placed the main subjects on the artwork and I went again through the process of fixing the values and the colors. Now with this one it took more time because I had to add more than just one layer of lighting. But it's the same idea, which is painting the light from the direction of the light source. Instead of using just the layer of the brightness, I used the brightness and contrast adjustment layer and I also used the exposure adjustment layer. Then I went to add more parts to that main character. First is the arm grip or the hand grip and then I add the torch just to make him look like he is holding that torch. And then I fixed the values and the color matching and the lighting of that torch and the hand grip. And with the flames, I used the blend if to cut the flames from its stock image. And then I applied it to that torch. I did not like that very warm reddish color from the flames. So I added as much adjustment layers as I can to give it that bright white look. And I achieved it by using the color mixer. With the new empty layer, I sampled a color from the warm areas on the flame. And I start to paint with the brush. And that's to give it the bloom effect. After that, with an exposure adjustment layer, 
I start to paint a new lighting for the source of the fire or the flames. And this time I made it very warm, like red to yellow, to match the color of the fire. Then I got this bow and I used the blend if to cut it from the white background. This is an element to add a story to the artwork. For example, to give the viewer the, the idea that this man is looking for to hunt that deer. And then I went to the process of fixing the values, fixing the colors just like I did with the trees. Then I got the stock image of that pack of uh, birds. Uh, they're not birds, I just don't know what's the name of that animal. And then I added them to the background, but my main goal here is to not get rid of that uh, white color of them. So I made sure not to make them too dark. And then I went to add more plants to add them to the edges of the trees because I didn't want the trees to look like they have flat uh, edges. So it's like adding details to the edges. And then I went to the process of fixing the values and the colors again. Some people ask me what filter I used to make my artworks look like they were painted. There is no filter, but the steps are to make your artwork brighter, then merge all the layers in one layer at the top by clicking Shift Ctrl Alt E. Then add unsharp mask, the amount is on 200 and the radius on 1.0. Then add an empty layer and fill it with black. Add noise and copy the settings. Then go to filter, blur and click on blur. Change the blending mode to screen and keep, and keep the opacity between 7 to 5%. And then merge all the layers again. Then go to the lens correction. And then go to custom and put minus 50 on the red and plus 50 on the blue. And add vintage. Then I go to the filter and I click on camera raw filter. Here what I'm trying to do is to change the color gradient of the whole image and that's by going to the color gradient and start tweaking these wheels till I get a nice gradient that matches with the feelings of the artwork or the feelings that I want to deliver from that artwork. And to give you some before and after to see the uh, effect of that three uh, techniques or three uh, filters, let me show you with the zoom. So this is before and this is after and as you can see this is what making my artworks look like they were painted. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you learned something new. If you want more content like this, I recommend you watch my latest video where I recreated this epic game scene in Photoshop. Also, if you want to see more advanced tips and tricks, be sure to get my digital landscape reloaded course. The link is going to be down in the description. I will see you in the next video. Peace.